All right, so I immediately had the thought of uh, when you left me with Wayne, um, another band that took on the name of their band because obviously Dean and Gene Ween are not their real names. They're two different guys, unrelated. Uh, and so can you think of another band that uh, is unrelated who all adopted the name of the band as their last name? Does it start with an R? It does start with an R and it ends with Amones. <laughs> the Ramones, Rocket to Russia is my pick. And it turns out not only uh, do they share that connection of adopting, but through my, according to my research anyway, the reason they did that, Ween, was because the Ramones had done that. Uh, they were inspired to do a silly take, I guess, on the same kind of thing uh, as uh, the Ramones, who all took the name Ramon, Joey Ramon, Dee Dee Ramon, Tommy Ramon, Johnny Ramon, uh, even though that was not anybody's actual name. So I went with Rocket to Russia, their third album uh, from 1977, I think, uh, if I'm remembering off the top of my head. Uh, they released a barrage of albums early on. I think it was within 18 months that from their first album that their third album came out. And it is, in a lot of ways, a retread of the first album, the kind of classic first album, which I could have gone with as well, but I'm, I'm, I'm championing Rocket to Russia here. Um, but a little more put together, a little tighter. Um, but whereas the debut had uh, opened with uh, Blitzkrieg Bop, this one opens with Cretan Hop, where <laughs> the first one had uh, uh, Judy is a Punk. This one has Sheena is a Punk Rocker. So there's lots of parallels kind of between the first and where it almost feels like a, like a retread, but uh, I think the... Uh, the hooks are sharper, and uh, the production's a little cleaner. And uh, I think Rock to Russia, if you're going to own one Ramones album, you can buy a poster of the cover of the first album and buy the actual music from, uh, from Rock to Russia. Not that the first Ramones album is bad, but uh, if you're going to pick one, I would, I would go with Rock to Russia. Uh, so it's got Teenage Lobotomy, it's got some classics, Rockaway Beach, which is one of my very favorite uh, Ramon songs. I think in general, you could probably get away with a, with a collection from the Ramones. They got the songs that they, I love, I super love, but I think pretty much anybody would tell you that they um, didn't vary a lot in their sound. You know, they, their approach was fast, loud, no solos, tight little songs, you know, and with a sound very much inspired by like the girl groups of the, of the fifties and sixties. Um, so it had, it's very sing-songy for something that is uh, considered prototypical punk, uh, just because of its very raw and straight edge, you know, or straight and narrow approach. It's very tuneful, you know, I mean, they were showmen. They uh, believed in putting on a show the whole leather jacket and jeans thing was a very conscious image that they put together. One thing about the Ramones, uh, one factoid about them is that none of them are, uh, none of the people who were appeared on this album are live at this point in time. Um, I think Joey, Dee Dee, and Johnny died in the early 2000s, and Tommy Ramone uh, died in 2014. Uh, so, uh, all the Ramones are gone uh, at this point. The original Ramones, I'm not sure about any of the replacements uh, that came a little later. Marky Ramone is around. Marky Ramone is around. And there was a CJ or something like that. Uh, and anyway, even the cover appears to be from the same photo session that the first album's thing came from. It's very tightly uh, associated with that first album. Uh, but it's a great record. Uh, it's a great tight little listen. You know, it's uh, I listened to both the the debut and this one yesterday 
and it took just a little over an hour to listen to both records. So it's that short, sharp punk, you know, 30 minute album. It's good stuff. So yeah, Rocket to Russia, 1977, uh, Sire Records. This releases on Rhino. It was a reissue done in a in an LP style jacket, but it is a CD. So it's got the little, I think these were 40th anniversary reissues. They were doing them 40 years from on from when they came out. There you go. There's my pick, my connection. Uh, bands that took the same name as their band, band members. I've actually seen uh, Ramones and Social Distortion live down in San Diego. <clears throat> and so, but I want to say it wasn't too long before I say it was like 94 or 95 and I went down there to go see them. And it was, I believe, 96 when they packed it in entirely when they stopped recording or stopped. It was, it was not too much longer before they called quits. And so, uh, and I think that had to do with Joey Ramone's health issues. Mm. He, yeah, he hung on then for another five years or so because I think it was 2001 that he died of lymphoma. But uh, yeah, so I will pass it on to you and uh, see what you can come up with. All right. All right. All right. So yesterday uh, you showed uh, Rocket to Russia, mm -hmm. um, great album. The Ramones are known for saying, and I'm not sure whether it's Joey or if it's Johnny that said it, but their philosophy on music was, if you can't say it in under three minutes, it ain't worth saying. And so that album is a fairly short album. Um, it clocks in at just over 31 minutes. Uh, and so that intrigued me. And so I originally was going to go with MC5s back in the USA because that is also a very short album at 28 minutes and change. I started thinking about it and it was like, well, really, Back to the USA has less songs on it. And so it would naturally be shorter. So I looked for an album that had the same number of tracks but was shorter in length overall for the album. And so I went with the Circle Jerks. Now this is a double LP, you can kind of ignore this one. But I'm talking about Circle Jerks' first album, Group Sex. And it clocks in at like 15 minutes and 15 seconds. <laughs> so I found an even shorter album. I mean, they don't have one song on here that goes over two and a half minutes. I think they only have a couple of songs that actually even hit two minutes. Mm. Most of the songs are, and they have four or five songs that are under a minute. Um, Group Sex came out in 1980. Uh, Circle Jerks was made up of Greg Hedson from, that later was in uh, Bad Religion. Um, golly, I can't think of the singer's name. The singer's name, which I should know, is Keith Morris. <laughs> and so th those are the two main guys that you know of from that band. Keith Morris was, uh, he came from Black Flag. He was one of the original members of Black Flag. And uh, he had left Black Flag. And him and Greg Hedson started up the Circle Jerks with a couple other guys. And... Um, put out an incredibly powerful, short and sweet punk album. There are 14 songs on this album and they do it in half the time of the 14 songs that the Ramones did in. So my connection is very short. In fact, when you get this on, uh, you can see this CD, they were just like, it's not worth putting just 15 minutes worth of music on a full CD. And so they put their first two albums on this CD, and I still think it, it comes in quicker than the entire record for Rocket to Russia. Oh, man. <laughs> and when you, when you actually 
buy it on tape. I used to have the tape of this. And it's funny because the tape is the two albums on one side and you flip it over and it's the same two albums on the other side. So it's, I realize this might be way out of your, your wheelhouse. Comfort zone. Comfort zone. Yeah. Wheelhouse. But it'll be, it'll, it'll be quick and painless. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll, if you listen to it, it'll literally be, 15 minutes of your life that you're going to miss out on. But uh, I think it's fantastic. I think it's group sex is one of the best punk albums ever made. It's so good. Uh, it just makes you, it makes you want to get in the pit. And so um, speaking of time, where am I at? You are five, four, three, two, one. Five minutes, baby. I will work off of that and uh, come up with something. Right on. All right, so you left me with uh, Circle Jerks, uh, Group Sex, right? Is that what it was called? And uh, Listen to it. You didn't mention, I guess, that uh, maybe it was a Black Flag original, but there was a version of Wasted on there that uh, yep. is covered by Camper Van Beethoven on their debut album. Yep. So I don't even know that I was aware of that. I've known the Camper Van Beethoven song for 30 plus years now, but uh, did not know the Circle Jerks version or the fact that it was a Black Flag song. So there you go. Learned something new, but that's not my connection. I thought about the sea of faces on the cover of your album and I thought I know several albums with a sea of faces on the front but I didn't choose uh George Michael's Listen Without Prejudice I uh, didn't choose Elbows uh Giants of All Sizes I went with Always the debut album from the uh, Canadian sort of indie pop band from I, I didn't look at what the year is I think it's like 2014-ish maybe I should have looked, uh, but anyway, Canadian band led by Molly Rankin, uh, who sings and is the daughter of the, one of the members of the Canadian folk group, uh, the Rankin family. What do you have? Were you gonna say something? I'm positioned over that spot where it should show what who the band is. I don't know who the band is. It's always. Oh, okay, okay. It is a self-titled debut from always. And it is always, and not always, I had a dearly departed friend who joked when I said that it's, it's pronounced always. He said, and here I am, I've been, I've been saying it like an old Norwegian guy, always, because it is, you'll see there's two V's in it. And I think it's just a creative spelling to get around the fact that there was already a band that existed that was called always. Uh, but I double checked it, I listened to a, a an interview with Molly Rankin herself, and she says, hi, I'm Molly from Always. So it is always, even though those two Vs really make you want to say always. So they have, uh, they're like an indie pop band. They, they make me think of the Smiths a lot. Uh, not so much in strictly in sound, but that they have sort of a melancholy sweep, kind of a disaffected view on life. A lot of the lyrics are kind of downers, but they're in such pretty settings. Um, that it, it's like it's music to listen to in your bedroom, you know, by yourself uh, kind of thing. There's this uh, song called Next to Kin that's about losing your, your uh, boyfriend drowning in the river, um, not, not being aware that he only went swimming because you wanted to go swimming and he was deathly afraid of water but never told you. And... Uh, and but it's just like I lost my love in the river, you know. Just the delivery of it is not super dramatic, you know, it's almost more wistful than it is like this. There's a powerful story, you know. It's like, you know, I, I lost his hand in the current, and that's as, as specific as it gets, sort of, you know, and the fact that it's called next of kin. Um, party police makes me think a lot thematically of uh, the Smith stretch out and wait, uh, which. It has the feel of like seduction via, listen, everything in the world is terrible, you know, 
So we may as well have fun in this moment, you know? <laughs> They've had two albums uh, to date. Uh, the second is equally as good, the, the excellently titled Anti-Socialites, uh, which sums them up pretty well. But yeah, out of Canada, I guess Toronto based, I thought I saw something that said that they were uh, formed in Prince Edward Island, but it says uh, elsewhere Toronto. So I didn't uh, double check what those were, but yeah, and I think I'm not even 100% sure. As many times I've looked at this, I don't know if the band is in the middle there or not. I don't know if the band is on the cover. <laughs> in this sea of faces but that is uh my connection to you uh, via the, the the cover image uh from circle jerks to always so i think i forgot to set my timer but i'm thinking that's probably about five minutes oh okay <laughs> yeah, i should have loved it high it was a Hail Mary. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you brought up Always, which uh, I listened to that, and that was a really good album. I really did enjoy that. So doing a little research, and you did mention it actually in your part that uh, they are Canadian, and when I looked up, uh, not that album, but their second album uh, won a Juno Award, which is, you know, the Grammys for Canada. <laughs> so they are foreign yet familiar. <laughs> um, but the fact that they're Canadian made me think of another trio, or not another, but a trio that's famous in Canada. And... Um, I figured they, and actually they also won a Juno Award uh, in 1979, 80, I think I want to say like 86, 87, and 89 or something like that. And um, that album would be the Canadian Triumph. Oh, <laughs> well, you might have been thinking of, but. Uh, I just recently got this, so this gives me a chance to do a uh, new finds. There you go. Going real slow on video. <laughs> <laughs> this album here is killer. A little bit different. I have uh, Never Surrender. And uh, this one here, Allied Forces, if you know that they have their kind of military type themes to them, Allied Forces. I think it was Progress of Power was the one before this one which won them their Juno. Um, this is considered their, is it titular album? Is that the way you would put it? Um, I, I don't know what, what album it is that you're saying, because it's... Or as most people will tell you that this is their favorite like, Triumph album. Like Quintessential? Like their Quintessential? I was thinking of Quintessential, not titties. Um, <laughs> this, does this have the inner sleeve? Uh, oh, great live shots. To I think they went. I don't know how long they went for. The last few albums are all just live albums. They're they haven't put out a a regular album in quite some time. But I'm trying to remember the names of the members of Triumph. Rick Emmett, who plays guitars. Uh. Mike Levine, who plays bass, guitar, organ, and piano, and Gil Moore, who uh, is drums and lead and backing vocals, too. So, uh, I mean, they're often compared to Rush, but really they have a totally different sound. I think they're more, they're less proggy and much more hard rock orientated than I would say Rush is. You know, Rush has a little sprinkliness on top of all what they do. These guys are a little bit more raw, and it's just killer, killer album cover, in my opinion. Just, just the way that it looks, it's all shiny and not just the shiny for my light. <laughs> but uh, yeah, great album. This, this one here, it's, it's amazing to me how you got this one and how much it ties into the next one. 
as far as uh, you know the the themes in the songs. But this one doesn't have any sampling on it like the other one does. But they also both have like little interludes in between some of the songs where the guy plays uh, where Emmett uh, plays twelve string guitar and such. And uh, kind of a lame back cover though. <laughs> but uh, showing a little crack. That's nice. Yeah, a little crack in there. A little crack. Inner sleeve, great shots there. Um, I don't think this one had the the custom label. No, it didn't. It just had the RCA Victor. Whereas the next one it had, you know, its own its own cover. Where am I sitting at right now? You just hit five minutes. Like literally just now, as you asked. <laughs> well, I'm done. All right. Well, yeah, you did throw me off. Other than the fact that I thought Rush, they won like three Junos. It would seem like even in album, years that they didn't put out an album, they would create a category to give Rush a Juno <laughs> award. Like lifetime up to this point, lifetime up to this year achievement. I, I, I can't imagine that, that Rush doesn't have a, a boatload of Junos. Um, I'm sure the rock category is just... It's it's like penciled in every year, Rush. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah, I remember uh, Never Surrender was the one that you had when we were young, right? Yes, and I had Thunder 7 as well, which was the oh. one after. Which okay, that yeah. the album I'm looking for, definitely. Yeah, because I remember those a little bit, and I remember some of those tracks and kind of liking them. Uh, that was kind of around the tail end of my hard rock days. Um, and so, I, yeah, I remember that. It's not being a band I was super into, but I do remember listening to those albums, but not this album that you just showed here today. I think I had Allied Forces, but on tape. So. All right. Well, I will um, think on it and see what I can come up with. All right. Well, here you go. Are you ready? Yep. Are you ready? I am ready. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh. You left him with kind of a, a stumper uh, with Triumph. Uh, I was having a hard time coming up with a with a connection uh, that didn't feel like something I'd already done recently, and so uh, what I started thinking about is that uh, Triumph is, of course, also the name of a automaker, and uh, so I went and looked through uh, different automakers through the years, and uh, what I came up with is. REO Speedwagon. Actually, no, it's not REO Speedwagon. <laughs> I don't have any REO Speedwagon. I'm listening to this one. <laughs> Was is Roosevelt. Uh, that was it's one of those iffy kind of, you know, back in the day, I think before the things were established, I think now the car is called the, the, the Marmon Roosevelt. But at that time, it was like, it was the Roosevelt manufactured by Marmon. And so whether or not it was a make or a model, I'm, you know, is a little unclear, but uh, there were a couple like REO Speedwagon and Pilot and stuff that I don't actually have any music by. Uh, Queen was also a, a, the name of three different car manufacturers in the U.S., in uh, the U.K. and Canada, I think, um, which I do have some Queen, but I decided to go with Roosevelt. It's basically a guy named uh, Marius Lauber. Uh, from Germany. He did not grow up in uh, Cologne, Germany, but uh, he was part of the, he joined the music scene in Cologne and uh, does electronic music. And this is, this is his second album, yeah, Young Romance. Yeah, again, it's one of those iffy kind of, is he Roosevelt? You know, he calls himself Marius from Roosevelt, but Roosevelt basically is him. And I've seen AKA Roosevelt 
or Roosevelt, as he says it. Yeah, so it's it's really great. It's uh, so it's electronic music, but it's electronic music that harkens back to the '80s. So you know, and kind of has a uh, fairly unabashed European disco vibe to it. Uh, so it appeals to me more than sort of you know the uh, trap beats and and such of today. He's only had the two albums. This was released in uh, 2018. Uh, in the U.S. on City Slang Records, uh, but on Greco-Roman Records uh, in his native Germany. And although that's his most recent album, he has put out a couple of singles this year in lockdown uh, called Sign and Echoes. Echoes is a, is a banger. Uh, that one came out just over a month ago. One hopes that they will be collected onto a third album at some point. Uh, the singles are download only uh, at this point in time. Um, but yeah, I don't know a ton about him. I, I, one of his songs, uh, called, uh, Teardrops caught my ear in a restaurant. Yep. And I, uh, shazammed it up and said, what is this song? And, uh, downloaded the single and, and very, fairly quickly bought his, his two records and they, and they all have the same kind of appeal. You know, they kind of have that disco European cool, you know, it's a little, uh, disaffected, even though it, the the beats you know can run hot and cold his his voice is a very even timber and so it's he's not a passionate singer he's a, a dispassionate singer i guess is, it would be an apt way to describe it and uh so i like just the cool of it you know even when the beats are, are slamming um but yeah it, it doesn't necessarily again doesn't sound exactly like erasure or uh that kind of thing but it's uh Harkens back to that song style, you know, it's very kind of verse, chorus, verse, and the covers that he's done, Teardrops was a cover, was a cover of an 80s uh, tune uh, by an RB2 by Womack and Womack, I believe. Uh, but some of the great songs, I love Illusions off of uh, this record is a favorite, Take Me Back, the opener is a, is a great song, uh, Better Days, and yeah, I managed to fill my five minutes, just kind of feeling my way around. I, I Like I said, I don't know a ton about them, but uh, that was my five minutes. And it's highly recommended. I just, we're in the, living in the day and age where you don't hear as much about the new artists that you find uh, than you would back in the day when you would read Rolling Stone articles about them and such. Uh, so Roosevelt, Young Romance, 2018 marking it as, I believe, the most recent record so far that we've hit. Teardrops on the dance floor. Remind me, baby, of you. Yeah, I love that song. Yeah, it's a good one. All right, so I will toss it back to you. Nasty. <laughs> Nasty. <laughs> 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 